Hey everybody, it's Ann Baby. Today is Saturday, May 9th, 2020. I'm Barb Hammer. So today is Victory Day in uh, Russia. Um, it was Victory Day yesterday in uh, uh, the West, and that is uh, celebrating the victory against Nazi Germany during World War II. Um, but uh, the country that really defeated Nazi Germany was actually the Soviet Union, which bore the brunt of the fighting and lost almost 30 million people, I guess. 20, it's been estimated 20 to 27 million. I usually round up to 30 million. Um, same for China during the war, 30 million or so. Anyway, uh, after that war, or right at the end of the war, there immediately began a Cold War against the Soviet Union. And um, once again, we're seeing another Cold War, and uh, especially against, not, not only against Russia, but uh, especially against China now. So today I want to talk about um, this new Cold War. And there are... Um, parallels to the old Cold War against the Soviet Union I want to bring up. And um, this is in conjunction with the coronavirus uh, regime change operation. I call it the mother of all regime change operations. The mother of all regime changes because it's to demonize China, ramp up tensions, um, uh, but also to impose um, this uh, fascism, fascism in the West, in Western countries. And uh, along with that fascism is um, increasing mass surveillance. Um, and uh, so I want to talk specifically about um, a document that's been circulating in alternative media. It's a um, a Freedom of Information Act document. Um, so if there's a um, restricted document, classified document, um, uh, a person or a group can submit a FOIA request, Freedom of Information Act request. Um, doesn't mean it's going to be approved and released, um, but this document was released and um, there's certain details of this group that submitted the FOIA request uh, that has not been reported. And I just want to fill in some gaps and sort of explain the context. Um, so I'm going to draw upon my background. Um, a lot of people hold it against me, but it just means I'm, I just have some inside knowledge. So I did work for NSA, the National Security Agency, from 1983 to 1991. And one year I was on loan to the Central Intelligence Agency and people would say, oh, you're just, immediately they say, oh, <laughs> you're a rat fucker or something, you know. Um, but I was just sort of a glorified bureaucrat <laughs> that had access to classified materials, that's all really. Um, uh, so as a an research analyst and a translator. Um, and um, so, I've learned more about, you know, since leaving, like I wasn't career and I never worked for contractors afterward, which is often what people do when they leave. So I just didn't like the security constraints and, um, but the pay was good. It was a very secure job, but um, it just wasn't for me and I left. And it, I, they were surprised when I left because it's like, that's unheard of. And I just saying, okay, I'm gone. But I wanted a real life. Um, so the National Security Agency is part of the Five Eyes. Um, it's the Anglo Alliance. That's the UK, the US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. And all the intelligence agencies in that alliance are based on the UKs. And there's actually another eye, Israel, and um, uh, often overlooked and uh, BB Netanyahu has claimed that it's actually the second eye, the second most important eye. That could be, I tend to put the US and the UK together 
because they're pretty, pretty close. So I don't know. Israel. I also include Israel. It often gets left out. Anyway, so there's this uh, FOIA document. Um, and it's, it was um, at first, actually, the FOIA document. Um, I first saw this. And, and it was Julie from the Book of Hours, who I follow on Twitter. And she follows me. And she posted this um link here and i just got curious i don't know i just clicked on it just wanted to see what that was and uh it brought up let's see yes this document this is the document that i'm talking about specifically and um i looked at it so this is the, actually the foia request uh document it has foia here um, but it's a presentation by this NSCAI, uh, and I can't remember the, um, the expansion for that. It'll come up later. Um, but anyway, um, this is the organization that submitted, yeah, um, the FOIA request, EPIC. Yeah, it has it here, EPIC. And so I got curious about what EPIC was. Um, um da, 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 da. Uh, yeah, EPIC is the Electronic Privacy Information Center. And, uh, so this is just the Wikipedia page. I just, you know, uh, if I want just some basic knowledge on a topic, I know it's CIA Wikipedia, uh, Jimmy Wales, I guess, who started Wikipedia anyway. But you'll get some basic information and then you can go from there. So this is about EPIC and I'm looking through here, but Electronic Privacy Information Center. Okay. Okay. Uh, human rights issues. I always kind of wonder about that. Uh, when I see human rights, freedom and democracy or democratic values mentioned, I always tend to think regime change, <laughs> uh, NGO. And so I'm going through here. Okay. Okay. And, uh, uh, okay. And then I found, I just scrolled down and I found, um, ah, champions of freedom award. Okay. Freedom. That's a regime change <laughs> buzzword for me since uh, learning about regime change NGOs. And then I noticed, who the recipients were. Here's one, Gary Kaspar Kasparov, who is a regime change asset uh, used to demonize, in the West, used to demonize Russia and Vladimir Putin, the president. Uh, Richard Clark, who, he's a 9-11 uh, asset. And um, yeah, he kind of covered up 9-11. Kamala Harris, Kamala the cop as a lot of the senator. She was an attorney general when she received the award. Yes, okay, isn't that interesting? <laughs> she wasn't known for being very enlightened in California, and now she's a senator. Edward Snowden, Eddie Snowjob, as I call him. Yeah, he's a CIA, he's a CIA PSYOP, so he worked for a CIA contractor um, at an NSA facility. He's often reported as a former NSA contractor. No. He, his mission was to demonize the government, NSA, in order to privatize mass surveillance, you know, because uh, I, I know private contractors, there's less security, there's less oversight, you privatize net, less government oversight, less regulation. And that was Snowden's job. The Guardian, which is an MI6 asset <laughs> outlet, yeah, The Guardian. Rand Paul, okay, Libertarian, okay, got it. Anyway, these are some of the recipients. Lifetime Achievement, Achievement Awardees. Anyway, I'd seen that list, I thought, okay, I got it. I know what this group is. Yeah, I knew right away. So I said to Lee, that report is from a regime change NGO and intended to demonize China. Yeah, I looked at the document, I knew what they were doing, so parallels um, yeah, so this is parallels between the missile gap 
Cold War hysteria over the USSR and China's tech advantage over the USA. Read about Epic and its champions of freedom, a worse to Kamala Harris and others. And I gave her the link. And then Julie, yeah, I remember Julie, she actually, she replied, what did you see? She replied somewhere, shoot. I can't find it now. Wait a minute. Okay, wait a minute. Let me find. She actually replied to me somewhere. No, that wasn't it. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. Ah, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. So, yeah, I had tweeted this out to Whitney Webb, who wrote that um, article that cited the document. And I said, have you looked into Epic? Yeah, so she had this, um, she cites the FOIA. I didn't, uh, so Julie had, that's the first time I'd seen the document mentioned. And then I didn't realize it was actually mentioned, cited in Whitney Webb's article. Um, so she said, last May, a government organization outlined an extremely Orwellian vision for what the U.S. must do to win the tech war against China in artificial intelligence. It essentially called to remake the entire American economy and society. Now, thanks to COVID-19, their vision is taking shape. And she cited this, uh, there's a White House document. Oh yeah, so here she cited, she, I know she was mentioning this epic, this FOIA request before her article came out. And there's the link, it's the same document. And she's got this link to the White House site about what they're planning. And so I said, have you looked into epic? You might be surprised to see See who the recipients of its Champion of Freedom Award, their regular rogues gallery of neoliberal regime change propagandists and assets. Okay, and I gave her this link to when I saw Julie's. So Julie actually responded and Julie looked into it and she knew what I was talking about. And she said, hi, MBB. I did a deep dive at epic.org. The staff and advisory board are crawling with uh, CMU, Yale, Harvard, and they have a fellowship with Open Society Foundations. Um, and Soros has been railing against China since she took a seat at the World Economic Forum um, in 2017. So yes, I see what you mean. So, so Julie looked into it and she knew what it was. And I said, yeah, Soros has a special hatred for China and funds the CIA, MI6, NGO terrorists in Hong Kong. So Julie knew. Um, yeah, so this epic document, um, I knew, I knew what was up here. So it's going into um, China's uh, tech companies and apps and all that. And you know, you got to remember, China, China's a big, <laughs> China's a huge country. So of course they're going to have a lot, you know, and they've uh, made leaps and bounds in uh, developing the economy modernizing it. So, you know, there's a lot of tech there. Um, but there's a lot of ignorance about Chinese tech um, and demonization of it. So epic, epic. So, um, yeah, so I knew there was a problem with this. And, and this was not mentioned at all in Whitney's article. She did not mention. So um, she mentions, right? Yeah, so when I saw the article, I read the article, and I clicked on the link, and it was the exact same document. So that was her, do the document she'd been talking about was this FOIA request. Um, and yeah, so this document suggests that the U.S. follow China's lead, and even surpass them in many aspects related to AI-driven technologies, particularly their use of mass surveillance. This perspective clearly clashes with the public rhetoric of prominent U.S. government officials and politicians on China who have labeled the Chinese government's technology investments and the export of its surveillance systems and other technologies as a major threat to Americans' way of life. Um, yeah, so it was, I just thought it was strange. There was no mention of what, who Epic was, but I knew. And as I said, this is kind of like, um, this is like the um, um, missile gap um, hysteria um, during the Cold War against the Soviet Union. So there was always this argument that, oh, we need to keep up with the Soviet Union and their uh, 
military spending and uh, nuclear we missiles, weaponry. Um, and this is part of Team B, something called Team B. So the, Team B were these neocons um, and they were not happy. So this is the thing, you know, the, like I was an analyst at NSA um, and there is uh, CIA is basically uh, has two missions. There are two sides to CIA. I mean, there's more to it than that, but basically CIA, there is a research side and those people are kind of like what I was doing, analysts and whatever. Um, so they do research. And then there's the operations side of the CIA. And that's those are the people who are out in the field and um, at embassies where we're recruiting agents, uh, carrying out some nasty stuff, <laughs> regime change operations. Um, yeah, so there's research. And so the research people were um, producing estimates, national intelligence estimates that were showing that uh, the Soviet Union's uh, nuclear stockpile and uh, was um, less than the U what the U.S. had. And so Team B were these neocons and they were not happy in the 70s and 80s. Um, yeah, they were conservatives, neocons. Uh, University of Chicago, Chicago okay. Uh, they were concerned about detente, the relaxation of tensions with the Soviet Union. Um, yeah, so Donald, Donald Rumsfeld, uh, he was President Ford, Gerald Ford's uh, chief of staff. And, uh, and so a lot of these neocons, uh, Rumsfeld, Wolfowitz, um, yeah, there's George H.W. Bush. Um, who's that? The, uh, Pipes, Richard Pipes. Uh, yeah, the team, here are the Team B members, okay. Oh yeah, Richard Pipes had it at, um, uh, let's see, Wolfowitz. Yeah, and so um, this was connected too to this uh, Cold War uh, think tank um, or lobby group, Committee on the Present Danger. And now we have Committee on the Present Danger, China. And that is Steve Bannon is one of the main figure. And he's revived that Cold War um, think tank. So Team B was, um, they ordered a reassessment of uh, the Soviet Union's uh, capabilities and they wanted it, uh, um, wanted them exaggerated um, to justify so justify um, more military spending. So um, they claim. So what you what you what they do is they claim just like now with China, they're claiming that a targeted country, in that case it was the Soviet Union, but now China. Um, they claim. So we're you know now they're claiming that China is doing what the U.S. the Five Eyes are already doing. And then, um, and then that can use, be used to justify pouring more money into groups, um, organizations, agencies, uh, corporations now that are already doing. So um, the, the U.S. and the Five Eyes, the Five Eyes are already um, doing much, much more than China is as far as mass surveillance, particularly on the citizen. It's not that China doesn't do it. It's just that uh, this argument, there's always this demon, demonization of China as uh, China is, uh, you know, the worst mass surveillance and people just don't, have not been, it's like the Rip Van Winkle syndrome is what I call it. People are not paying attention, not aware of the, pro, the mass surveillance programs of the Five Eyes. Um, and let's say, yeah, so Team B is all about, so, you know, we got another Team B and they want to sweep up more data um, and then use artificial intelligence to evaluate that data. Um, and, 
you know, this mass surveillance has been going on for decades. Um, and there were some restrictions on it uh, because of the church committee hearings in the 70s. So in the late 70s, they created uh, the FISA court. So the Free um, Foreign, and, uh, Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. And so there were restrictions on um, spying on um, American people in the U.S. But Five Eyes was how they got around that. So uh, the other members of the Five Eyes, they could spy on each other's citizens or people living there. And that's how they got around that. Um, so there's so many uh, mass surveillance programs. Um, uh, this is the page about the Five Eyes. So you got the Five Eyes and um, and then there are other organizations that are affiliated with um, the Five Eyes. And, you know, Echelon here's um, uh, one of the, uh, there's so many mass surveillance programs, uh, PRISM. Um, and they use corporate, corporate, you know, it's just a merger of corporation and state now. You can't tell the difference between the government and the corporations that are conducting mass surveillance. Um, and it's really increasingly it's privatized, so it's neoliberalized. So, um, you know, all these contractors, they're really the ones conducting um, most of this mass surveillance. And it got worse after 9-11, the war of terror. So here are all these programs, PRISM, that we've learned about from William Benny and not so much as Snowden, you know, Benny kind of, and there were others who actually revealed a lot of this. Um, so I'm just concerned that this dot epic document is not being, the context of it is not being explained. So the, this, the FOIA request would not have been granted if it were from uh, some other organization or it's not that it's, <sighs> EPIC is a regime change organization. And um, the fact that they wanted this document out there was to um, just do what it's doing now is to get people concerned, uh, get people to have concerns about China. It's to demonize China. You know, and there it says, Chinese tech landscape overview. This is all to demonize China, but that's not explained in the articles that have cited this document. And that's what concerns me. Um, yeah, another document, another, let's see. So Caitlin Johnson, she, um, she started talking about this and she actually says, narrative managers argue China-like internet censorship is needed. China-like. So she's demonizing, you know, it's kind of very, it's very, it's subtle, China-like. Okay, so she, I know, Caitlin Johnstone, she has said before, well, we know China's authoritarian, and she does the same thing in this article. Um, so she's mentioning Whitney Webb's article here. Um, and uh, let's see. Yeah, so here, yeah, down here she says Western government should espouse, that they're arguing that Western government should espouse Beijing's worst authoritarian impulses. So she just puts that out there and it's really, you know, it's very subtle, but there's a lot of uh, ignorance about China and misunderstanding about China. And um, they just sort of assume that China is much worse at its uh, mass surveillance. And um, that's because there are a lot of uh, supposedly human rights organizations that, uh, you know, put out, they just pump, you know, in the Western media, I swear, they just get all their information about China from these regime change NGOs and propaganda outlets, like the Epoch Times, that's the CIA. Falun Gong uh, cult outlet. Um, it's amazing. Uh, so, yeah, the other thing is there, uh, yeah, the China, yeah, because of its consumer market, that they're, um, 
allowing China to leap ahead in the fields of related technology with facial recognition. Yeah, the document cites the mass use of map, the use of mass surveillance on China's huge population base. It's just put out there like, okay, that's a fact, you know, but it's an agenda to demonize China when the five eyes are already doing this in the West, you know, and it's not just the five eyes, but a lot of, you know, Israel, there's Israel and other countries, they, they just do this, but they talk about it's China, China. And I always put like, but China, but China. And I always say whatever they accuse China of doing is what the five eyes plus Israel are already doing. Um, what else here? Um, so there's a lot of, oh yeah, when I was looking into Epic, Epic, yeah, there were some, uh, this is the Epic, so this is the, the group that submitted the FOIA request, and no surprise, it was granted, because it's a document to demonize China, okay. And it gets really ridiculous too. They say the document they're talking about, you know, that they have a uh, ride sharing. Oh no, they're going to get rid of cars. Um, okay. A lot of people, you know, uh, car ownership is extremely, is getting increasingly like, difficult for people in the U S you know, um, they have these huge, they have huge car, uh, car loan debt. They lease there's ride sharing. So a uh, fewer and fewer people actually own their cars outright. So they're going on about, oh, China, they don't own cars. Well, of course they own cars in China. And it's the stereotype about bicycles, I guess, in China or something. It's all these stereotypes about China. So anyway, this is the Epic page and they mentioned some of the recipients as I was talking about before. So uh, yeah, this is interesting. Um, so Blumenthal. No limit. Oh, okay. So one of the is interesting, this uh, Human Rights Watch China director, Sophie Richardson. So Human Rights Watch is an old Cold War regime change NGO. And she received this epic Champion of Freedom Award. Uh, the MIT Media Lab is also, I've learned, it's connected to uh, regime change NGOs. Uh, yeah. MIT Media Lab. I've learned that. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Sophie Richardson. She is the China Watch director. This is her page on the Human Rights Watch website. And they have a link to a video about China's mass surveillance phone app in Xinjiang to spy on the poor Uyghurs. The Uyghurs. The Muslims. So that's another narrative. You just, it's just ridiculous. And this comes from, um, all these propaganda outlets and regime change NGOs and paid assets to just make up stuff about the Uyghurs in Xinjiang. And this is just so, you know, Epic is just a big propaganda outfit really. Um, and that's the only reason that their FOIA request was granted. You know, of course, they're going to release a document that demonizes China. Of course, of course, of course. Um, what else? Oh, I was going to go into, um, so there's so many uh, mass surveillance projects that have been going on for decades. So National Security Agency, where I worked, was not created until 1952. Um, and before that, it was the Armed Forces Security Agency. And uh, I think before that it was like the SIGINT, uh, Signals Intelligence Agency, you know, uh, wartime agency. So it just, uh, you know, whenever there's a war, then things, you know, like war of terror. So you build more uh, it was a military industrial complex just grows ever bigger. So there was this project Shamrock, uh, sister project for project Minaret, um, that started in 1945. 
and they were just collecting. You know, there are satellites um, that the NSA and other agencies, the CIA, they have part of the National Reconnaissance, um, what is it, NRO? Oh, National Reconnaissance Office, which is technically a, an Air Force organization, and they provide the satellite, uh, spy satellites, and that, that technology for um, spy agencies. And so there's Project Shamrock, Project Minaret, um, yeah, so Project Minaret was a domestic espionage project. See, they spy, you know, there were some restrictions. I mean, I worked at NSA when there were, they had to mask the identities of U.S. persons, so a citizen or, or legal resident. Um, so the person's name had to be masked in reports. Um, the masking thing, uh, that came out, uh, was, was interesting. In 2017, it came out that uh, Donald Trump's Donald Trump and his uh, campaign and family, their identities were unmasked, and there was special tasking, I think, from the Obama administration for that. So they were spying on Donald Trump and his campaign and family, um, and they were using the GCHQ. They were getting around the restrictions on spying on uh, U.S. persons by um, using GCHQ, the British agency, to spy on. And I think they, uh, yeah, so GCHQ, they have an office at uh, Fort Meade where the National Security, nice National Security Agency has its headquarters. Um, so GCH, so Project Shamrock, Minaret, there's so many projects. Um, yeah, Echelon, and so, I actually worked at, um, for one year, I worked at uh, Pine Gap, which is a CIA facility uh, in Australia. And it's, you know, like, a, it's like a big satellite base. And, you know, all this data is just swept up routinely. And then, you know, they can, um, NSA, you know, used to pass all this stuff to, you know, any domestic stuff or whatever. Uh, traffic that's coming and going within the U.S. or between the U.S. and other countries. It was just routinely, you know, it could be passed on to FBI or Secret Service or whoever, you know, if tasked to do that. Um, so the, the, the FISA court uh, just put some restrictions on um, spe specifically spying on individuals in the U.S., or U.S. persons, um, and then their identities would have to be masked. So that's, and then after 9-11, that, I think that kind of went out the window. I don't know. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, so, oh yeah, I found another thing here. This is from the National Security Archive. So the CIA, um, they have done their own signals intelligence collection um, not using um, NSA. So uh, this is about, um, oh yeah, Operation or Project Rhyolite. So that was a satellite program. And so it was collecting data on Soviet missile launches and other things. And so this is just another um, this is interesting. I'll, I'll give you links to all these things because they're interesting. I haven't read all this, but um, I mean, mass surveillance, <laughs> the five eyes, mass surveillance is the five eyes, what they do, five eyes plus Israel. Um, so people need to stop demonizing China over this when they should be more concerned about what the five eyes are already doing, have been doing, and will continue to do, and more money will be paid into this, poured into this for um, artificial intelligence um, and collecting even more data. And the thing is, they're going from, they're always talking about legacy systems, going from legacy systems to AI systems. Well, um, you know, and online, you know, everybody's, uh, there's this talk among the libertarians that, oh, no, they're going to get rid of cash. Well, I don't know. A lot of libertarians are really into Bitcoin and digital currency, so I don't understand this. 
oh no, they're going to get rid of cash. And you know, these days, a lot of people, they're not really, I don't use cash very often, barely do. Um, it's always, you know, digital stuff online or, and, um, you know, a credit card or whatever, a card and you just tap and pe there are these payment apps now, Apple pay or whatever. It was like three different types that it are. And I don't know what this obsession with, uh, it's like, um, it's that Rip Van Winkle syndrome, you know, people are not aware or they're just kind of like ignoring what's going on. You know, people are addicted to online shopping and they're saying, oh no, they won't let us shop in stores. Well, you know, people are increasingly for convenience, they're shopping online. And um, so I don't understand this uh, freaking out so much about this sort of stuff. Uh, the other thing, uh, so this, for, this epic document, it's getting around even more. So who else <laughs> She's cited this epic document, but uh, Naomi Klein, uh, who writes for The Intercept now. And she, um, so this is interesting. So that document comes from, um, yeah, I gave the acronym. So the document comes from, aha, the National Security Commission on Artificial Intelligence. That's where that epic FOIA request document came from. Um, and Eric Schmidt of Google, CIA Google. Yeah, he's the chair. He, uh, yeah, he's the chair. And I didn't see that mentioned before. I didn't know that. So he's the chair of the National Security Commission on Artificial Intelligence which drafted that document about, oh no, China. Um, yeah, so um, down here, she says, the Electronic Privacy Information Center recently got access through a Freedom of Information Act request to a presentation made by Schmitz NSCAI one year ago in May 2019. Its slides make a series of alarmist claims about how China's relatively lax regulatory infrastructure and its bottomless appetite for surveillance are causing it to pull ahead of the U.S. in a number of fields, including AI for medical diagnosis, autonomous vehicles, digital infrastructure, smart cities, ride sharing, and cashless com commerce. And once again, Naomi Klein, she does not mention who Epic is the Electronic Privacy Information Center, a regime change NGO. Does not mention that. Nobody mentions that. Um, and so she's the only one actually mentions um, Eric Schmidt, the Google executive, and his connection to um, the organization that produced that document and, and that it was a slide presentation. Um, but yeah, this, um, they're worried about, oh no, you can't go to the doctor anymore. Well, um, so much of this stuff is already digitized. I don't know why they're acting like, oh no, China's doing this and we're going to do this now. We're going to become China. No, no. Um, the U S and the five eyes are already doing, you know, you know, increasingly things do, you're doing it online. Consumers are doing this stuff online. Um, uh, autonomous vehicles, um, so no cars, you're talking about no cars, digital infrastructure. Well, things are being, have already been increasingly digitized. I don't understand this hysteria. Right, sharing. Yeah, we got Uber and Lyft, cashless commerce, yeah. We're there already. Um, and I keep saying, oh, well, China's got um, this competitive edge. It's the missile gap. It's the missile gap, yeah. Uh, the lack of legacy banking systems in China. Well, I do most of my banking, uh, virtual banking is what it's called. So I do, most of my banking is online. So I don't know what the heck they're talking about. Uh, which has allowed it to leapfrog over cash and credit cards and unleash a huge e-commerce and digital services market. Well, China's just a bigger country. I don't know what they're talking about. China's just a bigger country. And, you know, consumers want to, buy stuff online and just like in the West. So, um, and there's all these, uh, um,
people have smartphones here with their payment apps, Apple Pay or whatever. I don't know why it's China, China, China. Um, yeah, I don't know. But once again, Naomi Klein doesn't mention who Epic is. Nobody is mentioning who Epic is. They don't talk about Five Eyes and the state of mass surveillance already in the West. They don't talk about any of this. Um, so anyway, I just it was really concerned that this document, this epic document, keeps getting mentioned in supposedly alternative media um, about the Chinese tech landscape overview um, from this organization that uh, Google executive um, Eric Schmidt chairs. Um, and this document is all about demonizing China and and it's the equivalent of the missile gap argument during the old Cold War with the Soviet Union. And it's just to justify more money for mass surveillance, um, supposedly to keep up with uh, China. And I'm just really concerned that no one no one has no one has talked about epic and what this agenda is really about. And they're just kind of um, leaving those stereotypes about China out there. Uh, China and mass surveillance. China, you know, and their mass surveillance on the Uyghurs. And, well, you know, heck, uh, this is the reality of the mass surveillance in the West, is the Five Eyes. The Five Eyes. Um, and these projects, all these projects. So, you know. I don't know what is going on. People, Eshwan, yeah, Eshwan, all these projects, PRISM, you know, we have, we are mass surveillance in the Five Eyes in the West. Anyway, we are, we are mass surveillance, mass surveillance. So, um, it's really disturbing that no one, no one, there's three different writers and none of them have talked about epic and this document and what the real agenda is. They just kind of leave the stereotypes about China out there. So anyway, I mean, this is a big topic. I could go on and on about mass surveillance, but anyway, that's my point is, um, um, we are China, you know, China, <laughs> we are already the stereotype of China and mass surveillance. So this is ridiculous to point fingers at China. And I always say, Whenever they're pointing fingers at China, it's really the five eyes plus Israel that are really doing it. And that's the case now. So anyway, I'll leave it at that. So thanks for your patience and um, have a good weekend. I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye.